So hi everybody and welcome back to the Bitcoin Day Trade channel and today I'm going to teach you guys how to make a Linux USB. I made a bootable USB of it <clears throat> and we're going to put it in our MacBook as you can see here. Press the Alt button. EFI boot, a lot of stuff, a lot of OKs, a lot of things. And we have Kali Linux which you can use, for instance, to security check something. It's not gonna be installed on the USB. I haven't figured out yet how to do that with Linux Kali, but I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a USB that you can use on any computer and you can live log into that computer and do some security tests. And once you shut down the computer, then the computer will never know that that USB has ever been in the computer. At the same time, when you do some stuff on the Linux version on the USB, then you cannot save this stuff because it's a live USB. It's just to try out Kali Linux. You can also use it to install Kali Linux on a computer, but today we're just gonna tell you guys how to make a bootable USB. What you need to have is a Kali Linux ISO file. So you gotta search for Kali Linux, very easy. Just go to the Kali.org website. I think Kali used to be called Bootstrap before it was called Kali. It's used mainly by people to security check stuff. So there is already a pre-installed version of, I think, Hashcat and John the Ripper. I think they have pre-installed Aircrack, which is used to penetrate Wi-Fi connections and some other stuff. You go to the downloads and you download a Kali Linux version, you can see that here and I think we're going to use a Kali Linux 64-bit version. Yeah, let's download the 64-bit version. You can use a torrent version or an HTTP version. So I'm gonna choose the HTTP version. Even though torrents are much faster, I prefer to show you this way. So we're gonna save that to our desktop. So once you have the Kali Linux ISO file, then you have a disk image. That's what it actually is. It is all the files compiled into one file. It's kind of like a zip file. In order to be able to create a bootable USB, we need to use a Linux Live USB creator. Lily as they call it. So we have to search for Linux Live USB Creator. It's this, this fashionable one with lots of colors and stuff. I, I checked it out a couple of days ago and it does work. So we're gonna use that one. LinuxLiveUSB.com. We download it for Windows. Download the latest version. Let's save it on our desktop. While this is downloading, we're going to install this Linux Live USB stuff. Let's press next, next. You know how to do this stuff. Once you have installed that stuff, you have downloaded the ISO file, you need to put your USB in your computer. So I'll be right back. Aha, that's the sound it makes. Okay, so preferably a USB free port and preferably the one that is directly connected to your motherboard, which makes it a little bit faster. Let's run this program. It's very easy. You need to choose your USB key. So in my case, I have a formatted in FAT33. I don't know if I pronounced it right, I think I did. But select that USB. Don't select the hard drive, obviously, because you might be in trouble. You might accidentally format your precious files on that hard drive. But let's choose that formatted USB. So if you don't know how to format a USB, let me quickly show you. This will erase everything that is on the USB, but you just go to your computer. So once you right click your USB, you will see an option format here. If you do this, you will erase all the data on it. So make sure that if you have data on that USB that you backed it up. Select your USB. Then select the ISO file. We just got it on our desktop. Is that Kali Linux? And you see a big yellow CD here because I also have a program called Power ISO, which can be used to fool your computer in thinking that it is actually a CD in your computer. That's why it looks like this and probably a little bit different at your computer if you don't have Power ISO. Use the ISO file. This version is compatible and it's integrated with check, recognize, regular Linux, works with mode Linux, live mode. You can check here, hide created files so nobody can see the files on the USB. We don't have to do that. We can just keep it open, but maybe you want it because you don't want anybody to see that you have that secret live Linux Kali. I think it's ready to go. We see green light here, green light there, green light there. That means we are ready to go. And once we click here, it's going to start. And it's going to take us like 10 minutes. I'll be back in 10 minutes. It is writing on the USB. As you can see, it used to have no used space. And now we have copied one gigabyte of data. I'm gonna show you in a couple of minutes that it does work. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, I think, on my MacBook. Because it's very hard to record my screen while um, rebooting a computer. That's 
I don't know how to do that. So I'm probably just gonna turn my camera around and just show the screen of the computer because I don't know how to screen capture that yet. And once it is finished, Chrome Explorer, a website will pop up which would tell you that it is finished and it would give you some advices on what you can do with it. Ugh. Waiting on computers is so boring. Even one minute, well, it feels like it lasts for like half an hour. 2.6, well, it can't take much longer because we're at 2.6 gigabytes, so we're almost there. The file itself is 2.9 gigabytes, so we're almost there. 2.92 gigabytes. That means it should be almost finished, but I'm still waiting on that finished screen. There should be a screen popping up saying, you're finished. First time I did this, I thought it was finished and I ejected the USB, but it wasn't finished yet. Oh, we see some differences here. You see, installing boot sectors. I think it is finished with copying the files, so it's almost done. Yes. Ah, this was the pop-up screen that I was talking about. Now we know that the USB is finished, once you see this screen. So it automatically pop up and it will show you your Linux USB key should be ready now. Thank you for using it. Don't forget to share Lily with your friends if you liked it. So I am sharing this with you guys. I did what they asked me to do. Now I'm gonna show you how to boot your PC. Shut down Windows, insert USB and power your PC and then press that one button on your PC. It's for every PC different. Sometimes you need to press F2, sometimes it's F8, sometimes F10. I have even had a computer one time with F11, but you need to go to the boot menu and then you select the USB and then you boot from the USB. And we're gonna do that right now on the MacBook. And when you use a MacBook, you have to press the Alt button to do this. So, see you guys in a bit. Okay, so as you can see, this is the USB that we just used the Linux Live USB creator on. Made a bootable USB of it. And we're gonna put it in our MacBook here. Now it's in. You shut down your MacBook or PC or it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna show you on the MacBook today. Shut down. Hi. And I think it has been shut down, so put it back on. Press the Alt button. You get yourself a pop-up screen, you select the new EFI boot. Then I got a small error, but that doesn't matter. I think that has to do with the Lily installation. So I hope you guys can see. Oh, it's so black that screen. Wow, you can see the dirt on my screen so well. I haven't cleaned my screen in like a century. As you can see it booted into a list and you can select the live system or you can select the start installer but we're not gonna do that we're gonna start the live system. A lot of stuff is happening. A lot of stuff. A lot of okays. A lot of things. This is normal. And we have Kali Linux working from a USB. We can check out some files on that computer. Other locations. Ah here. As you can see, we are on Linux now and we can use all kinds of applications. As you can see here, these are all pre-installed. So for instance, here you can see uh, password tag, John, Hashcat. Remember Hashcat from the tutorials? Here we have John the Ripper. I think Johnny is another version of John the Ripper. These are all password cracking stuffs. Wireless attack, air crack NG. This is to be able to enter a Wi-Fi of somebody else. But I don't know how to use this stuff. I haven't ever used it before because I haven't had any interest actually in this stuff until recently a little bit. But yeah, Hashcat. We are familiar with Hashcat. I have a couple of tutorials on that. That's how it works. And you use the terminal to do stuff. You see a root at Kali and you can run stuff from here. If you would create a file on the, the desktop, then it won't save it for you. So you cannot create new files. You cannot save stuff here because it will be gone the next time you run the computer. So yeah, that's just it. Let's power it off. And now no one will ever know that you have been on this computer. down the computer reboot the computer I think it was F11 for me I don't know I usually just press everything then you select your USB maybe it's this one yeah see same screen again go to a live system we get that same screen again and this is on the Windows computer we even have it on dual screens I don't know what's gonna happen. Gonna use dual screens or one screen? Dual screens, nice. Let's focus on that. So again, we are at Kali Linux. I don't know why I do not see all the hard drives yet on the PC. I'm confused by that, to be honest. Other locations. So this is my 
a Windows C drive. You see, here we have Windows, here we have all the Python installations that I always show you guys. So we did make it into the Windows computer. Awesome. And same principle here, same programs. Yeah, that's just it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna shut down power of going back to Windows. So as you guys can see, it was not that hard to create a live USB for Kali Linux. Like I said, you cannot use this Linux version to save files on, but you can just use it to try out some penetration stuff. You can check out computers that aren't working to still be able to read the data. You can do this to secretly check into a computer that for instance has a lock on it, like a Windows computer with Windows protection. Like I think chances are very big that you can get to the Windows files even though you don't have access to that computer. It is an easy way to gain access to to a hard drive. I think that's just it. If you guys did enjoy this small tutorial about how to make a live Linux version, live Linux USB, then leave a big like. A big like. Well, that's small, you know, big. And if you're new to my channel, it would be so awesome if you would subscribe to my channel. Perfect. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you guys in the next tutorial. Okay, outro has been shot.